along the coast of North, uh, along the eastern coast of North and Central America, as well as certain Indo-Pacific countries, in the shallow waters of their beaches lives an animal called a horseshoe crab. They are small, round, horseshoe-shaped animals with a tank-like body and a long tail. They are almost entirely nocturnal and eat pretty much anything small enough that fits them in their mouth, which lives on the ocean floor. Things like worms, small crustaceans, and algae. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, facts about horseshoe crabs and FAQ, and horseshoecrabs.org about the species, both retrieved on September 26, the most common type of horseshoe crab, Limulus polyphemus, lives on the eastern coast of the Americas, while there are three other uh, subspecies of horseshoe crabs, each with their own Southeast Asian island. According to EarthDate.org, horseshoe crabs, living fossils, written by Hennings J. and Lynch H. on January 23, 2021, horseshoe crabs have remained almost entirely unchanged from their ancestors nearly 400 million years ago. <clears throat> They're what is known as a living fossil because their living uh, species today is nearly identical to the fossilized remains of their ancestors those hundreds of millions of years ago. This means that they've evolved in such a perfect way that their species requires virtually zero evolutionary change in order to adapt or survive better to their given environments. In this informative speech, I will give you some quick facts about their physiology, their breeding habits, and why they're so important to the human race. When a lot of people first see a horseshoe crab, the first thing that they think of is them being a crustacean, relating to crabs or uh, lobsters. However, uh, according to, <clears throat> however, according to biologydictionary.net, written by Lindy Whitehouse on October 12, 2020, horseshoe crabs are not crabs at all or even crustaceans. They're more closely related to, the, to arachnids. However, they belong to the family Limulidae. Lots of people, when they first see a horseshoe crab, also come under the uh, assumption that they're dangerous. Horseshoe crabs are entirely uh, uh, friendly and have no intention of hurting anyone. In particular, their tails, many people come to the false conclusion that they're uh, covered in poisonous barbs or perhaps are used for hunting. But these specially designed, but these, uh, next slide. But these specially designed tails are actually called a telson and are used to flip themselves over in case that they end up upside down stranded on the beach. Even though these are specially designed to help them flip over, sometimes they can still struggle to right themselves. <clears throat> uh, in the occasion you find a horseshoe crab stranded upside down on the beach, you should never pick it up by the tail as this can only hurt them. Instead, you should hold them by either side of the shell and gently lay them right side up. And keep in mind that they cannot hurt you. Another interesting fact about their physiology is their eyes. Horseshoe crabs have two compound eyes, similar to those of uh, other uh, crustaceans or insects, but they also have eight extra, anywhere between eight and 11 extra light sensing eyes, which they use to tell the time of day. These are important as they are nocturnal. Brings me to my second point. Because horseshoe crabs are nocturnal, <clears throat> they prefer to mate during only the nighttime. However, this can rarely occur during the day. They also prefer spring and summer seasons. However, in places where uh, weather is similar year-round, you can also see them mating around the entirety of the year. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, uh, the, most in the most interesting fact about their mating habits is that they follow the lunar cycle. Horseshoe crabs uh, on full moons, new moons, and on high tides, you can see horseshoe crabs migrating up to the beach hundreds at a time in order to mate. According to Jonas L. from NPR.org on July 11, 2009, as many as 13 males will find one, male to mate, or one female to mate with in a single night. Sometimes they try to do this all at the same time, which can lead to huge clusters of horseshoe crabs all along the beach until day rises and they migrate back, onto the, back into the ocean. Next slide. <clears throat> Finally, the reason horseshoe crabs are so important to humanity is a bit of a graphic one, and for those who might be a little sensitive to borderline animal abuse, this might be warned. <clears throat> the reason horseshoe crabs are so important is because they're, they have a special type of blue blood which contains a very important chemical known as limulus ambicite lysate, shortened to LAL. Uh, LAL is very important in the modern biomedics industry because of its ability to coagulate and clump around hostile bacteria. Horseshoe crabs use this to their advantage in order to avoid getting certain illnesses or infections from bacteria. However, for decades now, 
humans have been collecting horseshoe crabs in order to draw their blood and extract the chemical LAL and are using it to decontaminate and purify uh, nearly any injectable drug as well as vaccines. There is no other source of the chemical compound LAL, so horseshoe crabs are our only means of obtaining it. Additionally, <clears throat> no other method of decontamination has proven to be nearly as accurate or as efficient as using horseshoe crab blood. According to biologydictionary.net, uh, after the horseshoe crabs are collected, they are taken to a special facility where their blood will be drawn. Um, before anything, before their blood is drawn, they go through a pre-screening to make sure that they're valid candidates, uh, at which they are kept during the entirety of their handling, they're kept cool and moist in order to be similar to their home environment. And only about 30% of their total blood is drawn before they are freely let back within 24 to 48 hours into the wild. So nowhere near a lethal amount, usually. While typically this does not kill them, uh, it does leave a small portion of them as a mortality statistic. Now, uh, not a lot of people are aware of, you can go to the next slide. Not a lot of people are aware of this part of the vaccine making process. However, now that I've given you this informative speech about the horseshoe crab's physiology, their mating habits, and why they're so important to the human race, you can come to your own conclusion about whether or not the way that they're being used for our advantage is justifiable. Thank you. It's going to be really easy to be persuasive. I was going to say you kept in your lane there. Oh, wait, feedback, and then who's going to be next? Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like you had a really like good professional tone, and then um, you were really good about saying.